Hello, this is Jeremy Doolin at Doolin Digital, back with another tiled map editor tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about one of the more advanced features, uh, but definitely one of the most uh, useful and time-saving. It's called auto mapping, where you can uh, uh, let tile do some of the work for you. Uh, it's really a, a great time-saving measure. And of course, when you're creating content for a game, especially something like a, an RPG with a lot of different towns and maps, uh, you really want to be able to save as much time as you can. Uh, this can be uh, quite a tedious process. And certain things are really difficult if you're drawing... Uh, well, not difficult, but tedious if you're drawing them one tile at a time. Uh, for example, the houses that you see on my screen. These houses can uh, occupy multiple different layers in the map. Um, because we want to have things drawn uh, in a different order so that we can have characters walk behind things and so the characters are drawn underneath certain parts but not others and some of these objects um, some of the tiles have collision and some don't and uh, these houses all have doors and, and uh, light sources associated with them so to draw one of these from scratch can be really tedious and time consuming well what if you could do it in just a few seconds so auto mapping can help us do things like this plus many others all right, so I'm going to uh, show you the example that I'd actually posted to Twitter where uh, I can draw a house very simply. Uh, I'm going to go to my house tile set. I'm going to choose this little roof tile here. And um, let's draw a few of them, starting right here we will do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, look what happened. All I had to do was draw this tile eight times, and Tiled's auto mapping feature automatically drew everything else. It recognized the pattern that I had drawn, and uh, based on one of the rules that I had created, and it automatically popped up this house. And um, all the different parts of the house are drawn in their appropriate layers. So uh, I'll here I'll save, export, and um, let me run my game, which I have a command in Tiled to be able to run my game right from here. Um, let's exit here. Hey, there's my new house. It's uh, already there, and I can walk behind it. I have collision in the right spots. I have uh, the light source here. Um, I have the door, but it will crash because the door doesn't go anywhere. But that was it. That was all there is to it. I uh, created a house that quickly using auto mapping. Uh, if I go to the object layer, I can select the door, and then over here on the left where we have the properties window, the properties pane, <clears throat> here in custom properties, all I have to do is um, give it the map ID, so let's just call it, um, you know, south house, and then a destination tile X and Y uh, for, for whatever uh, submap X and Y uh, coordinate I, I want it to go to, and it's done. This ties into my map loader uh, in my game engine, and uh, that's all I would have to do. So this was all done with auto mapping. Um, I'm gonna undo the task here. So obviously, very time uh, very time consuming um, task. Really, only took a few seconds, um, and. I could just as easily create one of the smaller ones. If I come over here and select this tile, and I draw it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Um, oh wait, no, hold on. I changed something for the for this tutorial, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Uh, but you get the idea of how the auto mapping feature works. So I'm gonna show you how to set this up, and it's really not too bad. There's just a few important things to keep in mind that aren't explicitly stated in the documentation, or, or at the very least, they're easy to miss. Um, the tile documentation is very good, but sometimes things are easy to miss, and sometimes the documentation doesn't quite illustrate everything that you can do with some of its features. So the first thing that you need, in the same folder, same directory, where you're saving your map files, and I'm talking your .tmx map files, in that same folder, you need a text file called rules.txt, lowercase r-u-l-e-s.txt. And it is just a simple text document. And uh, let's have a look at it. There's not much here. It's just two lines. And each line refers to a path to another .tmx file. 
Um, and this isn't in the same folder. If it were, we could just type it out like this. Um, but my my TMX rule files are in um, a folder, uh, in a different folder. And so I'm using a relative path using uh, the dot dot operator. <coughs> So I have two different rules files, one called house rules and another one called outside rules. And uh, let's just say, for example, I were to add another one called inside rules.tmx. Um, I can just keep adding these as I add more rules files. The order that you put them in this file does matter. Um, and it, it has to do with matching patterns. And um, we're not going to get into that into too much detail. You might not even come across it yourself, but do keep in mind that it does actually matter, the order in which these are uh, in the file. But we're just going to work with the two that I have. Now, these are just plain old map files that it's referring to. There's nothing special about these TMX files. Uh, it's a TMX file just like any other tiled map. But they are laid out in a very specific way. So let's take a look at my house rules file. Okay, so here's my house rules.tmx file. And as you can see, I have six different sort of pre built houses that I can build very easily using auto mapping. Now, I think obviously I'd probably want to have a lot more than this. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure I'll take the time to, uh, to generate who knows how many more. Uh, but the other nice thing is is that you can build one of these you can draw one and then you can make changes to it you can you can edit what you place even during auto mapping it's not going to hurt anything to do it that way um, each one of these represents a rule for building a single particular house uh, notice how they're all separated it doesn't really matter where they are you don't have to have them in any particular place on the map but it does matter how far apart they are. You do need to have at least one tile in between each uh, specific rule. And so you can see I have one tile here in between the greenhouse and the, the larger like tavern type building. So as, because, and the main reason for this is if they're immediately against each other, it considers it one single rule. All right, so something very important to keep in mind about each rule is that there are three parts First is the region, second is the input, and third is the output. So remember that for each rule, you need a region, an input, and an output. And this is done using tiled map layers. So over here on the right in my layers pane, um, you're gonna see a layer called regions, and it must be named regions. Now if you read the documentation, you'll find out that there are some exceptions to this, but doing this the simple way, this layer needs to be called regions. All right, and I've disabled the rest of the, of the layers so that you can just see what I have for regions. Notice that some of these are in black and some of them are white. That actually doesn't matter at all. It only matters that you have a tile painted there. That's really all. You can use any tile you want to define a region. So I could take this window tile here and uh, there, I created a region that's four tiles wide by two tiles high. And I could use that for an auto mapping rule. Um, but I would prefer using a solid color for my own. You can do things however you want. Uh, so I've just used the inside of this door. Yeah, I can use that for a region as well. So it really doesn't matter what color. Um, the purpose of the region is to define the drawing area, the total drawing area that's going to be used by the auto mapping rule. And since I'm auto mapping houses and buildings here, <clears throat> my regions are, uh, they're large, they take up a lot of tiles. And you can see that each one is just large enough to accommodate the building that, uh, that it's going to be auto mapping. And also notice that each region has at least one tile in between the other. There is an order that the auto mapping system uh, follows. It, it goes um, uh, Y first, so the Y tile, the, uh, the rules that occur uh, higher first in the, the Y order are uh, checked to, for matching first. Um, but as you can see in this first row, if you want to call it that, I have three that are at the same Y value. 
In that case, it will use the x value, so it goes from left to right. Um, so far, I haven't had uh, any problems because of the ordering there, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so there's the first thing, regions. The next part is input. The input represents the pattern that you're going to draw that then results in the auto mapping occurring. So if you take a look at the patterns that I have here, I really just picked a tile, uh, usually a roof tile, and I chose a distinct pattern that's different from the others. And when I draw that particular pattern, the auto mapping system detects it and it takes it from there. Now, have a look in my layers pane again. Take a look at the name of this layer. Input underscore objects. Your input layer needs to have a prefix of input, lowercase i-n-p-u-t underscore, followed by the actual name of one of your map layers. So if we go back to my map, I have layers called ground, ground deco, objects, objects deco, entities, objects upper, above, collision, and object layer. Ground and ground deco are just what they sound like. They're the ground and the ground decorations. And usually I have these drawn totally separately. I don't need auto mapping rules for them. I'm using auto mapping rules for things that are on the ground, above the ground. So my input layer is my objects layer. That's where I'm going to draw my inputs. So if I come back over here, you can see that this layer is called input underscore objects underscore one. The underscore one is just my thing. That's, that's my uh, naming convention. Uh, so what this is saying is that I have to draw this pattern in the layer called objects one in order for that rule to take effect. Okay, so let's take a look at these uh, five red tiles. That should be this particular tile. I can go into the objects layer and then draw one, two, three, four, five tiles. Okay, there it is. You see how it popped up automatically like that? Oh, I just found a mistake. My chimney is missing a tile here. Oh, that's quite all right. All right, but notice how it popped up right away as soon as I drew the fifth tile. That is an option in the map menu called Auto Map While Drawing. I like to have this enabled because um, usually I know that I'm auto mapping and so I want things to happen as I'm drawing. You can disable it, however. Okay, so if you disable it, all right, let's delete those tiles and uh, I'll draw my five. Now, I have the input there, but since it doesn't automatically auto map while drawing, I have to press the A key. So it's up to you, your preference as to which way you want to go about that. Um, I do like to have the auto map while drawing enabled. Okay. So that's the input layer. The input layer is the pattern that you're going to draw. Um, so there's a caveat here that I want to make you aware of. Let's go back to this map, and I'm going to try to draw this house right here. One, two, three, four, five. Well, auto map while drawing is on, and nothing's happening. The reason is there's not enough room for the building. The region, okay, the region that I've defined, is too large to fit the object in here. So it will not draw it. It will not auto map it. Because if it did, it would overwrite other tiles that I already have. So rather than overwriting existing tiles, it just will not auto map for you. So keep that in mind. You're, that, and that's specified by your region. All right, next. We've taken care of regions, taken care of input. All of the rest of these layers are output layers. And this is one of the really great things about auto mapping is that you can have it draw in multiple layers, just like you would draw normally so that you can affect the drawing order. And best of, best of all, you can actually draw objects. Um, and objects are tiled's way of representing just about anything that you want to, like collectibles and doors and triggers and dialogues, and NPCs, light sources, who knows what. Okay, so let's take a look at my output. Um, the layer names are also, once again, important. 
output layers, no surprise here, begin with the prefix output underscore. And once again, the rest of the layer name must correspond to one of your actual layer names. So this objects one, above one, collision one, object layer one, these all correspond to layers that I'm, the, the actual names of layers in my map. So uh, definitely come up with a, uh, a, a cohesive and consistent naming scheme for your uh, map rules, map uh, layer name, excuse me, because that'll help with auto mapping. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm putting in my objects layer. My objects layer really represents the the things that you can collide with, um, things like signs and you know maybe chests and trees, walls, shrubs, large rocks, anything like that. Then the output above layer has uh, the rooftops basically. My collision layer is basically just a layer of these little uh, translucent red tiles that I use uh, to determine where there's collision. Now, I have this disabled in my map. If we go over to my regular map, we can see the collision layer if I click on it. Um, but the nice thing here is with the auto mapping rules, it will automatically create the collision layer so I don't have to worry about it. Again, saving time. And then lastly, we have our object layer. I have two different objects that are being automatically created for these houses. One is the light sources, so it's the little teardrop shaped uh, objects. They represent a single point and the, that point is a pixel location where that light source uh, will be placed in my light map. So here with my windows and any, any place that looks like it has, should have a light source, these will automatically be created when I draw the house. I won't have to do that and they automatically show up when I run the game. Uh, and then the doors will also be created automatically along with their triggers, but I do have to finish uh, creating the trigger by specifying the map and the location where the door will take them. All right, so that's houses. Um, those are the, uh, the rules that I already have created. Let's make a few new ones so that you can see the process from the beginning. I have a completely empty rule file here called outside rules. Hold on one moment. Mouth getting a little dry there. All right, so outside rules represent some outside tiles. So I have things like signs and fences, rocks, trees, some wood bridges. Um, I want to be able to put signs in my villages so that anytime I create the sign, it automatically places the collision uh, tile there, and it also creates an object um, that allows me to specify what the sign says. Um, and I'm going to make a gravestone that does the same thing. So I have a couple of gravestones here. And then uh, we're going to work on this tree because the tree also uses multiple layers and some of it is collidable and some of it is not. So we're going to be working with all three of these. First, the sign. I'm just going to use this little sign here. Remember our three parts. We have regions, input, and output. So my first goal is I'm going to create, I'm going to define the region for a sign. Well, a sign is only one tile. So that's all the region has to be for a sign. My input is going to be the sign tile itself. So when I draw the sign tile, that's my input. That's the that's my signal for the auto mapping system to take over and start drawing other things for me. Now it's time for my output and I have more layers here. So for my output, I'm going to draw my sign in the objects layer. I don't have to draw anything in the objects deco layer, nor the upper layer, nor the above layer. These are This is a much simpler rule here. However, I do need collision and an object. So let's switch over to my collision, which is just a little red tile here. All right, um, I need to set the opacity. 0.4 will work. So this is now going to be a collidable tile. I won't be able to walk through the sign. Let me go back to my outside. And now uh, for my object. This sign will be collidable, but it won't be readable. If you walk up to it as a player, nothing will happen. There's no trigger there. So I need there to be a trigger. So it's time to place an object. So I just 
click and drag to occupy that one square. My object type, now this is another tutorial that I'm going to do at some point. Object type editing is really cool. Um, I'm going to use the sign type. And this is an object type that I created that represents a sign. And this is going to be a trigger that's placed in the map. Notice it now has a new custom property called message. This is going to be whatever the sign says. Now I don't want to fill it in here. Um, it's just it's showing me that this sign is now going to have a property called message. Let's go back to my town and place a sign. Let's see what happens. Uh, do I have, yeah, auto map while drawing is on, so let's place the sign. Okay, do you see the dark outline around the sign? That's the, the trigger, the object that was created. If I were to place this sign, that doesn't happen because it's, uh, it's a different sign tile. So to edit that object, now I just highlight my object layer, I select it, and now over here there's that message property, and now I can specify what the sign says. Please read this sign. Okay, all right, let's test. Save, export, and run the game. Let's exit, and here's my sign, and I can read it. And proper collision. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now let's take care of the, um, the cemetery headstone. This uses two tiles. So for my region, I need it to be two tiles. One tile wide by two tiles high. My input is just going to be the base of the stone. My output will be the base, but then the top is going to be in the object's upper layer. That way, my character can walk behind the, uh, the headstone, the gravestone, at that point. Okay, so now I've got my output. I need a collision tile uh, just at the bottom, however, because I don't want them to collide with the top. I want them to be able to walk behind that. And I do need an object because I want them to be able to interact with the gravestone by reading what it has to say. So let's create my object. And this is just going to be another sign. It's really the same thing as a sign, just a different tile. And there's our rule. So it's going to automatically draw um, both tiles in their proper layers. It's going to create the collision tile, and it's going to create the sign object. Let's go back to the town and get our gravestone. We have to make sure we're placing it in the right layer, too. And let's place it right here. Now hit, there you go, it automatically created everything I needed. And I can now select the object. Here lies John Doe. He died. Save it, export it, run. And there's my gravestone. And here lies John Doe, he died. All right, let's do one more the tree. Trees can be a real pain in the neck, especially if you're drawing a map that has a lot of them. So auto mapping can really save you a lot of time here. Um, to define my region, I'm going to select all of the tiles that actually draw something. So let's go to regions and uh, I'm going to draw the tree there for my region. Um, then I'm just going to replace it now that I have a better look at it. I'm going to replace it with the white tiles anywhere there's a tile. And I, I just did that just for help. Okay, so there's my region. My input, how about it just be the tree trunk? So all I have to do is draw the tree trunk and the rest will happen. Alright, my output will be the tree trunk and then the leaves just above it. That's going to be the collidable part in my objects layer. Then in the object's upper layer, so that my character will appear under it, I'm going to draw the rest. It looks kind of like a wig. So that's now in the object's upper layer. The last part will be collision. Oh, not Christmas. Collision. So I don't need an object for this one, unless I wanted to be able to talk to the tree. 
which really isn't that out of the ordinary for an RPG. Uh, but not in this case. This is just for drawing purposes. Okay, so let's save my outside rules.tmx. Go back to my map. And let's pick our little tree trunk here. Make sure I'm in the objects layer. And right here in the middle of winter, I'm going to plant a tree. And there it is. Apple S, Apple E, Apple Alt B to run the game. I just have all these things uh, bound to keys. And uh, there we go. There's my tree. With everything in the right layers and with the collision in the right place. So that's auto mapping. And this is really just the start. Um, auto mapping can do quite a few things. It's one of those things where I'm sure you'll be able to imagine some of the things that it can do right away. Um, but it's also one of those tools that uh, you'll find more uses for as you go along. I never really thought about using it for signs and gravestones until um, I was getting ready for this tutorial and it, it just occurred to me that it would be a, a great idea. So hopefully you get a lot of use out of the auto map feature. Hopefully it saves you a lot of time. And uh, that's you know the name of the game. We want to make this easier and more efficient. And uh, if you have any have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter um, at doolindigital.com. That's D O O L I N digital D I G I T A L. And um, my website is www.doolin-digital.com. I'm also going to be uploading uh, this to my website at some point. So thank you for watching, and um, I'll be back again with another video on. Uh, Tile map editor again soon. Thanks.